So this topic is all about uh, still reading word problems and translating them into equations to solve. Specifically, all of these examples that you're, you'll see in this topic will involve distance, speed, and time. Now, anytime you're doing a word problem that involves those quantities, some distance relating to some time, relating to some speed, it's going to be following this uh, important formula. Distance equals rate, which is another word for speed, times time. Now, um, these particular problems will usually require you to set up two equations. Um, so there are lots of different ways to do this. Some people like to use charts and tables and boxes. I like to sort of organize my information to a grid. We'll see with, uh, with these examples here. So let's read the first example. Dan left Kristen's house one hour before Abby. They drove in opposite directions. Abby drove at 23 kilometers an hour for four hours. At this time, they were 362 kilometers apart. What was Dan's speed? Now, even if I didn't tell you that this whole topic was about distance, rate, and time, I hope we can just sort of, like, just read that it's all about traveling. They give us information about distance. They talk about speed. They give us information about time. Distance, speed, and time, the first thing that should pop in our heads is that wonderful formula. Now let's sort of sketch what's going on here. So here's Kristen's house. Dan leaves and travels for some time, and then Abby leaves in the exact opposite direction. So this line here represents Dan's distance, and the left line represents Abby's distance. Now, notice how their distances sort of make one long, continuous line. So without even processing the equation or processing the example, I know that I'm probably going to have to add their distances together. So let's keep that in mind. Distance equals rate times time. Next, I'm just going to make a chart. One for Abby, one for Dan. So I have Abby's distance, DA. Abby's rate. RA and Abby's time, TA. Same thing for Dan. Distance, Dan. Rate, Dan. Time, Dan. And I'm just going to fill in as much information as I know. So let's just start from the beginning. Dan left Kristen's house one hour before Abby. Uh, that seems important, but I can't write that down yet. They drove in opposite directions. Well, I've already drew my picture, so that one's done. Abby drove at 23 kilometers for four hours. Kilometers per hour, that's a unit of speed. So that's Abby's speed, 23 kilometers an hour for four hours. So I know that this is four hours. But wait, let's backtrack. It clearly says Dan left one hour before Abby. So that means he's on the road for an extra hour. So if Abby drove for four hours, Dan must have drove for five hours. At this time, after this time, they were 362 kilometers apart. Well, that's the, that's the total distance apart, 362. That's our diagram here. And then what was Dan's speed? So they want the rate for Dan. So that's our variable x. Well, we've already said before, according to the diagram, we need to add their two separate distances together to get 362. And how do I get distance? You multiply the rate and the time. So Abby's rate, 23, times Abby's time, 4, plus Dan's rate, x, times his time, 5, should equal the total distance of 362. What do you know? This gives us an equation to solve for x. So let's solve for x. 23 times 4 is 92 plus 5x equals 362. Subtract the 92. It gives us 270. And then divide out the 5. Gives us 54 and it's kilometers an hour. There we go. Dan's speed is 54 kilometers an hour. So there really is 
M- much like most topics, it's it's sort of an easy and a hard thing at the same time. It's s- sort of one of those you you got to know how to do it, and the only way you can get better at this is by practicing. Let's take a look at another example. Daniela wanted to take a small road trip, so she headed to the mountains. The trip there took her five hours, where her trip back only took four hours. She averaged 40 miles per hour on the return trip. Find the average speed of the trip there. So if I were to sketch this out, here's Daniela's house. She's going to go to the mountains. And she spends some time there, and she goes right back. So unlike the previous example where we saw that the two distances added together, I hope we can see that just through the story that these two distances should equal each other. So when I do the rate times time formula, instead of adding them according to the story, we should set them equal to each other. So we have two trips, to the mountains and uh, from the mountains. So I'll do... Um, let's see, distance to the mountains, the rate to the mountains, the time to the mountains, the distance from the mountains, the rate from the mountains, the time from the mountains. And let's just fill in all the information that they give us. Um, let's see here. The trip took her five hours. The trip there took her five hours, so the trip to the mountains was five hours, whereas the trip back only took four hours, so from the mountain was four hours. She averaged 40 miles per hour on the return trip, so from the mountains was 40 miles per hour. Find the average speed of the trip there, so that's what we want to find. So there we go. And uh, knowing that distance equals rate times time, we'll just go ahead and multiply these two guys together. And since according to the problems, the distance should equal each other, we're going to set them equal to each other. 5x equals 40 times 4. 5x equals 160. Divide out the 5. x equals 32 miles per hour. So I guess with these types of problems, doing a quick number line sketch might be helpful. Last example I have for you. A freight train left Washington and traveled north. So I have a freight train. Six hours later, a diesel train left traveling 30 miles per hour faster in an effort to catch up to it. After 10 hours, the diesel uh, train finally caught up. So we have a diesel train, and it says that he caught up. To him, so clearly, again, according to the story, uh, the two distances should be the same. So when I multiply rate times time to get distance, I'm going to set them equal to each other. So let's do the distance of the freight train, the speed or the rate of the freight train, and the time of the freight train. The distance of the diesel, the rate of the diesel, the time of the diesel. Now there are some subtle. Um, conclusions that we need to make. It says that the diesel train left six hours earlier, or six hours later, which means the freight train has been running for six hours more. Clearly, it says that the freight train, or the diesel train, has uh, uh, been traveling for ten hours. So since the freight train had a six-hour head start, I know it's sixteen hours for the freight train. Now, the speed, they give us 30 miles per hour faster. It says the diesel train is 35 miles per hour faster. So when when you want to write that down as an equation, to be faster, you're adding. So it should be x plus 30. But what is this x here? That's the speed of the freight train, because we don't know what it is. So there we go. Distance equals rate times time. And since they're supposed to catch up to one another, you set them equal to each other. 16 times x equals 10 times x plus 30 and then we can go ahead and solve this equation 16x equals 10x plus 300 subtract the 10 over 6x equals 300 x equals 50 and we were looking for speed so it's miles per hour so 
So, I mean, word problems, they can be tricky, but once you figure them out, they're pretty straightforward, and the only way you can figure them out is with good practice. So have at it.